Hi, and welcome back. This is one for the Reaper users. I'm going to show you a useful trick I like to use to create a three-band linear phase crossover using only Reaper plugins and the routing options. First of all, I'll show you around the setup. Then I'll show you how to set it up yourself. So the mix is playing on track one, which isn't routed to master parent. Instead, I've sent it to track two, called Crossover. Likewise, the crossover track isn't routed to the master. Instead, I'm splitting up low, mid and high signals, as I'll demonstrate shortly. And sending these out to separate low, mid and high tracks. Here's just the low frequencies. Here's the mids. And just the treble. These three tracks are in a subgroup folder which I've called Full Range, so I can easily process the full reconstructed signal on this track. In this case, I've got an EQ and a compressor. So each of these tracks can now be processed however I like. I've got an instance of Saturn on each of them, doing some tube style saturation. But of course, multi-band saturation is quite different to full band saturation. So this doesn't sound at all like adding an instance of Saturn over the full signal. This also allows me to indulge my compressor fetish. I've got an instance of the glue on the low band. And MJUC doing some parallel compression on the mids. And finally, a Pro C2 for the highs. But these could be any of the compressors in my collection, which is the nice thing about setting this up yourself rather than just using an existing multi band compressor. Another nice thing about this setup is as the crossover filters are on a separate track. I can easily bypass all the processing for each band without losing the filtering. I can even do that with the band soloed if I want. If I bypass all my processing, both for each individual band and for the full range track, then flip the polarity for the full range track. Then I'll go back to my original mix and put that back in Master Pair and Send and it cancels completely with the reconstructed full range signal, giving us a perfect null. So that tells me that, with no other processing going on, the crossovers aren't changing the sound at all. They're linear phase, and I'm not doing any damage just by splitting the signal into individual bands. So let's delete all these channels and I'll show you how I set it up. Let's create five new tracks and I'll route the mix into the first one, which I'll call Crossover. While I'm at it, let's name the other tracks Full Range, Low, Mid, and high. OK, now we need an instance of reefer on the crossover track. Let's make that a bit bigger. And I want to set this up as a low pass filter. I'll select the first node, set the frequency to 100 Hz, and make sure the gain is at unity. Now let's isolate the bass by dragging the second node down to the bottom. That looks about right, but in fact this is really steep. It'll work fine, but I'd prefer something around 24 dB per octave for a full mix. One octave higher than 100 Hz is 200 Hz, which needs to be down by 24 dB. But we probably want more attenuation for the stop band than this. 
So let's go up another octave to 400 Hz and down to 48 dB. Another octave puts us at 800 Hz and minus 72 dB. And one more gives us 1.6K and 96 dB of attenuation. The node is now off the bottom of the graph, so let's set the lower range to minus 96 so we can see it again. And now we have our 24 dB per octave linear phase low pass filter. This perhaps looks gentler than you'd expect, but that's just because of the graph scale. Now I'll open the plug-in routing window, create a couple of extra pairs of channels, and reroute the low band to channels 5 and 6 instead of 1 and 2. Notice that we're now hearing the full range signal again. With nothing connected to output pins 1 and 2, the input signal is passed through and is available for the next plug-in in the chain, which is going to be another instance of reefer. Let's create a high-pass filter. I'll set the upper node to 8K and make sure it's at 0 dB. And I'll go for 24 dB per octave again. So that's minus 24 at 4K, minus 48 at 2K, minus 72 at 1K, and finally 500 Hertz will be at minus 96. And there's our 24 dB per octave linear phase high pass filter. This time I'll reroute the output to pins 3 and 4. Now let's route these channels out to their own tracks. First of all, let's take the crossover track out of mix. Then I'll drag a send to the low channel. And we need to choose stereo source channels 5 and 6. And now we've got low frequencies on the low track. Let's do the same for the high frequencies, which we routed to channels 3 and 4. Okay. But what about the mid frequencies? Let's solo the mid track and rewind. And let's start by routing the full range signal. And now we need to remove the lows and the highs. But I can literally do exactly that. I'll create another send to the mid track and this time choose the low frequencies on channels 5 and 6. And now I'm going to flip the polarity for just this send. This is actually an amazingly cool and useful Reaper feature. The ability to flip the phase of an AUX send doesn't seem like much, but in fact it opens the door to loads of cool tricks that would be difficult or impossible in any other DAW. No doubt I'll be showing you more of those in due course. Anyway, we've literally subtracted the low frequencies from this track, so now we need to do the same for the highs. Note this filter inverting trick only works this perfectly with linear phase filters, like the ones in Reefer. Okay, now we've subtracted the highs from the mid channel, so we have high frequencies isolated on their own track, and mid frequencies isolated, and low frequencies. I like to recombine these onto a fresh track. So I'll select all three tracks and drag them onto the full range track to create a folder and a subgroup. So I can process the recombined full range signal if required. As before, if I flip the polarity of the full range track and sum it together with the original audio, we get a perfect null. until something changes, of course. So this proves that the crossover isn't changing the sound at all, and we're not doing any damage to the signal. At least, not until we start to process the individual bands. Of course, before we start adding saturators or compressors, this would be a good time to save the setup as a template.
that's all. Thanks for watching.